Today we're going to be going over painting your uh, armor plates, how it's done, uh, the steps, um, putting weathering, you know, doing the weathering or the distressing, um, and doing it in a way that, that you can do yourself that's not going to be um, super expensive. Um, it's pretty easy. A lot of people get a little bit freaked out when it comes to painting, but painting is, is very simple, really. I mean, like anything else, it just takes time and uh, patience and, um, you know, applying what you've learned over time. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and put the first layer down before we even worry about masking masking off for weathering. Um, I'm going to show you the tools that I use um, in, in the process of painting and distressing and uh, give you some alternatives on what you can use depending on what your, your budget is going to allow. Let's look at the prep, the prep that we need to do. Okay, this is our plate. You probably remember this from uh, the uh, the Sintra episode. I'm just using 150 grit sandpaper, just a spare piece. But I'm putting a little bit of a surface, a little texture on here, so that the paint can grab and bond to the plastic a little bit better. Back when uh, I first got into to all this, they didn't really have a lot of these plastic bonding paints. You had to go with putting a layer of primer on and then um, worrying about uh, you know worrying about getting all your subsequent layers after that. But now they've got they've got paint that's specifically for um, plastic, so it just bonds right to it. So you want to give it a, you know, just a texture. It doesn't have to be a whole lot of sanding. Just try to get all over it. Rough it up, basically. We're just roughing up the surface of, of this. And you'll feel it. It's starting to feel rough. And you might even be able to see the scratches on it at this point. We're going to go ahead and put our base coat down. Now, a lot of people say, well, Tom, what kind of, what kind of uh, paints do you use? I really have no personal preference. The only personal preference that I have is one color and one specific type of paint, and that's the bronze that goes on my own armor. So that's my only real preference. I find that Rust-Oleum and Krylon, which are mostly available here in the States, and I'm not sure what they have outside of the U.S., but uh, Rust-Oleum and, and, um, and Krylon work the best. I tend to like to keep the paint brands the same, when I'm doing a piece of uh, when I'm doing armor instead of mixing I know sometimes you might find a color in one brand that may not, another brand may not have it's pretty hard to do nowadays but it's it's possible if you start mixing brands especially where the metallic paints are concerned like this this uh, aluminum color here um, you can uh, you, you may um, you may get what we call orange peel or alligator skin uh, the carrying agent inside the metallic paint doesn't like the curing agent in the non-metallic other brand paint and it, it won't accept it so it's, it's kinda like uh, you know it's just saying hey this isn't gonna work so your paint starts to scale up and starts to get all these weird little veins and you know uh, peel look to it and it will not cure it'll take forever for it to dry now you've got to take all that paint back off and do it all over again so just try to stick with the same brand either go all Rust-Oleum or all Krylon or all Duplicolor or all whatever um, but stick with the same brands. Um, the only brands I've ever successfully been able to mix and match and not get the orange peel was Duplicolor with uh, Krylon. Now, I've never mixed Duplicolor with Rust-Oleum, but uh, Duplicolor and Krylon seem to work well together if you just absolutely had to. But um, Anyway, one of the things that I use on my uh, paint cans is this handhold spray topper, okay? And this will work on pretty much any any paint can brand doesn't have to be Rust-Oleum it can it'll work on a Krylon can as well I've got two different kinds I've got this one and I've got another one that fits inside the grooves on the Krylon cans now that one will work mostly with Krylon and Duplicolor but anyway this uh you buy these I think they're about I don't know I think this one was like eight eight or nine bucks you just squeeze these here in the back and just just fits it just fits right over the the rim of the can there where the where the spray top is and um, that way you can hold it you know while you're spraying and you can get a nice more controlled spray before you start spraying you always want to make sure that you shake your paint up real good you can shake this paint up real well
always shake it up real good that way you get all the curing agent and the paint actually mixed but I'm gonna spray and then spray and spray and spray so it'll be back and forth and back and forth okay so I'm gonna show you guys, show you guys how I do it all right You always want to make sure too that you're doing this in a very well ventilated area. I'm doing it in my shop. The painting where it's very well ventilated. Alright. Now that's our first coat. We're going to let that dry off a little bit. And then we're going to come back. We're going to do a second coat. You don't have to put all of your coats on at once. You want to you know, you want to, you don't want to have to glob the paint on there. You want to just put them in nice, uh, uniform coats, several coats at a time. Okay. Sometimes I like to do about three coats of the base metal coat before I even get to the color. All right. So we're going to let that dry and then we're going to come back. We're going to see how, how our first coats turned out. All right. So our first coat, it's not totally dry, but it's, it's fairly dry. It's tacky. So we're going to go ahead and put the second coat on. And what I've done also is I've turned the plate so that I can get this outside edge like I got this, the other, the, the inside edge. Okay? And of course we shake our paint up again. Always keep that paint sh uh, shaken up. You're going to get a much better, you're going to get a much, much better coat if you do. You want to try to keep your paint held probably, I'd say, at, at no no closer than a foot away as you're spraying it. Any closer than a foot, and uh, you're going to risk what's called overspray and getting just too much paint on the piece. So no no closer than a foot from the actual piece um, when you're painting. Any closer than that, and you're taking a big risk. So now we'll let the second coat dry. We'll do one more coat, and then that'll be it for our base coat. Then it's time to go in and start uh, working on our masking. This will be our final metallic coat before we move on to our first color layer. Check around all your edges here on on the piece, and these edges did look pretty good. Again, you want to keep that can no closer than a foot. And that's okay if you get some on the inside of the plate. Now you can probably notice and hear the rhythm of the uh, of the sprayer as I spray spray. You want to go back and then let your finger off and then come back and let your finger off. I, I go from left to right, right to left, left to right, right to left, and then I move down the piece as I spray. Left to right, right to left, and then back up around the sides. I always go left to right. Now you may want to go right to left, but you always want to go side to side and move it down. Don't I find up and down like this never does a very good job. Um, some paint cans, like I know with Krylon, you can actually adjust the direct the, the spray on the on the paint can tip. You can actually adjust it on Krylon cans, so it'll it'll either spray um, uh, uh, horizontally or it'll spray vertically. However, you want the mist to to go. Um, I'm just so used to doing left to right and right to left that that's the way it works for me so you just gotta find your your own little technique and and your rhythm there's a rhythm to painting find that rhythm and once you've got that rhythm down in your head then you'll know from that point onward how to paint and how it's gonna come out the way you like it because once you figured your rhythm out and you look at your finished piece then hey you know that rhythm worked for you alright now we're gonna let this rest and, and finish uh, uh, drying out here before we go on to uh, to 
uh, working on uh, masking out for weathering. So um, that'll be the next step in this. Adding weathering or distressing to your uh, to your armor pieces, your armor plates. Um, I'll, I'll tell you a little a little bit about weathering here and, and what makes it so special and so important. Um, you want your character uh, to look like they've lived in their armor. I mean, you know, that's a lot of people will, will, will say, well, you know, I don't have to do weathering, so I'm not going to do it. I'd like my armor to be pristine, and that's perfectly fine. If you want your armor to look pristine, there's nothing wrong with that. It's perfectly fine. It's it's not going to get you, um, uh, um, you know, it's not going to keep you from passing the, the, the Mando Merck's approval process. Um, but it's it also, you know, I think when uh, when I see a pristine kit or a kit that doesn't have any weathering on it, I think it may look great. It may look just spectacular, but it's missing something without the weathering. The armor just tells the story of you know of where you've been and what you've done. Um, and seeing all the distressing and the weathering on the armor, it really adds a level of detail and a level of of life. To your kit that you wouldn't have in just a, in, you know in a non-weathered or just a pristine looking set. To do weathering, there's a, there's a couple uh, really good ways. Uh, the first way is probably the most expensive way, and that's using this is called masking fluid. Um, it's available in most craft and art supply stores. Uh, you can get it at Walmart. You can get it at Michaels. You can get it at AC Moore. For those of us in the U.S., those of us who are not in the U.S. Uh, you should be able to still get it at Walmart, um, and whatever you know, uh, local art or craft supply store you've got will probably carry it. It's basically watered down latex, okay? So um, you could actually make it yourself if you bought a, a jug of latex and just watered it down. That's pretty much what this is. So um, it's like thirteen to fifteen dollars, depending on where you buy it. That's pretty expensive, but it lasts a long time. It goes a very, very long way. It doesn't require a lot to do what's what you need to do. Um, there's also methods like using toothpaste, which is a very good and cheap method. Um, some people have also used mustard. Now, I'm not sure about that method myself. I've also heard some people say that it, it stains sometimes, um, which that that's not necessarily hard to believe since it's you know mustard will stain clothes. So anyway, I just use masking fluid. So that's what we're going to use in this. Uh, the same properties that I, you know, the same techniques that I use here can be used with toothpaste or whatever solution you decide to use. Uh, even Vaseline, if you wanted to use Vaseline. So I'm going to shake this up just a bit. Now, the key to, to good weathering here is you want to, first thing you want to do is you want to, um, you want to accentuate the areas where um, metal would meet metal or these edges that would scrub against another piece of armor okay so pretty much all of your armor that would meet another piece of armor which is this edge these edges this edge and possibly this edge are all going to need to get some weathering on them some weathering it doesn't have to be um, you know it doesn't you don't have to go off the off the deep end with it but it needs to get some weathering okay so, what I'm going to do here is, like I said, it doesn't take much. I'm just using, this is an old sponge brush that I that I trimmed down and retrofitted into my, I've used it before for weathering, and that's kind of why I'm using it now. Just get a little bit, you can pour, actually I'm going to pour a little bit in this lid here. Pour a little bit in the lid, you get a little bit on the edge of the brush. You can use whatever, a two, uh, uh, a, a Q-tip works great for this also. So what I do is I just lightly, lightly coat the edge. If you go over a little bit, that's okay. You want to you wanna kind of coat the edge and come in a little bit. Let me hold this up so you guys can see what I'm doing. And if you, if you dribble a little bit on there, that's okay. It's not going to hurt anything. It's going to make little weathered areas. That's what we want anyway. We want areas where the paint is going to come up. So... These little dents on this this corner here, where it's going to it's going to work perfect for that. And of course, you want to make sure you get those edges there. Doesn't make much sense if above the edge has lost paint, but the actual edge itself has not. 
you know, be a little chaotic with it. Be, you know, the main thing is that you get this outer edge, but above that, you can be a little chaotic with things. And that's going to give you some really good, that'll give you some wear down. And it won't necessarily be streaks, it'll be actual wear down. It looks, it'll look scrubbed. And that's what you want. You want that scrub look. Now we'll let that dry, and when it dries, I'll show you exactly how it should look. We're looking at our masking fluid, and it's just about completely dry. As you can see, it's not the bright kind of eggshell white that it was earlier. Uh, there's a few places that are still, you know, still drying where we've kind of lumped it on there. But uh, for the most part, the edges just kind of have this dull kind of almost a dirty look around the edge um, and that's what you want that's how you know it's dry when it's got that kind of uh, translucent uh, dirty kind of look to it so don't go too crazy too crazy makes your job you know really difficult um, especially if this is the first time that you've done this okay we're gonna keep it real we're gonna do this um, we're not gonna kill ourselves doing it so, we pour a little bit of our masking fluid back into the lid here. So, I'm thinking that maybe put a few little scratches in here. Um, what I'm going to do here is, I'm actually going to tap a little bit of this on here. And by tapping, I mean literally tapping the brush and it's going to make some little splatter marks. Let me get a little bit more on there. All right. Now we've got like these little dots here, so what we want to do is we just kind of want to bring them down a little bit and work them out. You know, they've kind of splattered. It doesn't doesn't really move out a lot when it splatters. So you gotta kind of help it a little bit. The key is to make this pattern as random and chaotic as possible. And then over here we'll we'll put a little bit. So we'll let that dry. We'll come back to it, and then we'll go ahead and put our uh, our layer of black paint on. Our masking fluid's pretty pretty much dried at this point. So now it's time to go ahead and put our layer of, of black paint on. And I'm just using a um, just using a, a rust oleum flat black. You can use whatever works for you. This one is almost out, so hopefully we'll have just enough to get this get this done. We're gonna put a couple coats of black on it. We're not gonna go we're not gonna get too crazy with it. Just put a couple coats on it and we should be good. So we're gonna let this dry. We're gonna come back to it and we'll spray our second layer on which should um, give us a nice crisp final look with the black and then we'll go over with some masking on that to make our second layer of weathering. So there's our masking fluid. And what we're going to do here, we're basically going over what we've done before. So we're going to go over. We're going to bring it in a little bit, okay? We don't have to bring in a whole lot. Probably brought in a little too much there, but that's all right. We want to bring it in a little bit, just like not even a millimeter, like half a millimeter. And you don't have to bring it in all over. You know, you can totally decide where you want that second layer of paint to show up. I'm not going to put it all over here. Here I'm going to actually leave it off so it goes straight to metal. So all we're doing is we're going inside the weathering we've already put. Now here, we're actually going to nick this right I love nicking the little corner here with some weathering because that corner always makes me think, hey, something's going to get caught on that, you know? Something could totally get caught on that. So now we're going to go through here. And you can be a little chaotic on this as well. Just You just want to make sure that you're butting up next to what's there. I want my my 
my layers here to really pop. You don't have to go this detailed with it. Again, we're just outlining. We're just outlining some some areas here. One of my favorite things is actually taking off the masking fluid at the end. Um, the masking fluid itself. You know, it's got if it does flow, and as it pulls off, sometimes it actually brings a little bit more paint with it than what you had planned on. So you get sometimes a little bit more randomness when you're removing it. If that makes any sense at all, I painted my Mark II helmet with this. I used masking fluid instead of um, tape for a good portion of it, and when I pulled the masking fluid off. First, I was like, oh my god, what have I done? But then the more I got to looking at it, the more I was like, oh my gosh, this is the coolest looking um, weathering I think I have ever seen. Because it was all nice and random. Um, and it actually looked really, really good. Of course, I have not done it that way since. Um, mostly because, you know, that it kind of scared me a little bit. <laughs> Because I just, I just don't know that I wanted to do that again. But I might try it for my my Mark VI. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. So remember, again, try to keep it, try to keep your distance no more than or no less than twelve inches. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and start painting. Now we'll let this dry, and we'll come back and add our top coat, our second top coat, which will be our final coat. We're going to put our absolute final layer of paint on this piece, um, and it is still our forest green, like like what's on there now, kind of an olive drab. All right, and I'm going to count along as I do my swipes from from left to right and right to left. That way you can get an idea of of the rhythm, the tempo that I use for actually spraying. I know it's kind of weird, but it works great. One, two, 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 one, two. And the whole purpose of the rhythm is so you know when to press and when to let up. Now this piece is probably close to drying because it was still a little bit tacky when we started. But now look at those edges. I'm going to hold this up. See how we got all those edges real nice and painted? Obviously it's pretty dry because I can put my fingers on it and it's not, it's not coming off here. So we got those edges real nice which is what you want. I mean, it's not really going to matter a super duper amount because we're going to be taking off most of the paint on that edge anyway when we remove the, the weathering. And you can kind of see real well the, uh, the weathering on there now. So really all we've got left to do is to let this finish drying, which, yeah, it's still, you can see it's left a little tiny spot right there, but um, it's pretty much, you know, it just needs to dry, and then we can just take this off, and uh, and then we'll go from there. So let's let this dry, and we'll come back to it. We've put our final coat of of paint on our plate, and um, everything's pretty much ready to go at this point. All we really have to do is uh, um, pull up our uh, our masking material, our masking fluid, or or wipe off whatever you were using as your masking material. And you can kind of see how as everything's dried it's left this nice you know these nice big areas here where it's easy to, to kind of see the you know the fluid that was used. So all I do is I take you know I take something like a these are just some tweezers some tweezers I normally use and I just pull. And as you can see 
you can just take your finger and kind of scrub across it. As you can see, it reveals this really nice weathering effect that has been created. So you just take that and you just pull, and then you scuff. I use my fingers here and just scuff it right off. And so you get that really, really nice. See how it goes from green to black to the metallic color? Same thing up here at the top is a little bit easier because you have the edge. So you can just run your finger right across it and get the scuff. You get that nice that nice scuffed up effect where metal meets metal. Same thing for the edge. I'm a big fan of making sure you get the edge too because, I mean, you know, you want it to be, you want your weathering to look as realistic as you can get it. And it's not that hard. I mean, you know, it's not that hard to do good weathering. It just takes patience. And at this point, we've got, uh, we've got our plate weathered. I mean, it's, you know, she's, she's weathered. She, we've got our nice, you know, three-toned weathering going on. Three different layers. You've got your metallic bottom layer. You've got the black layer, which is the middle layer. And then you've got the green layer. What we're going to do now um, is we're going to is I'm going to show you how to add a carbon dusting to this so it looks like it's dirtied up and it's been in, in some firefights and um, some dust has settled on it. So doing our carbon dusting, it's uh, it's pretty easy. Um, all it is is I'm, I've just got four basic little little things here. Okay, I've got this is a um, this is just a little one inch, the inch of a one inch, or the, the end, I should say the end of a one inch, you know, bristle brush, like a painting brush. This is a piece of um, charcoal colored artist chalk. This is just a, a jar lid and a piece of sandpaper, okay? What you're going to do is you're going to take this artist chalk and you're going to use the sandpaper to sand... Sand the, sand the chalk down so that you've got some chalk right here in the bottom of your bottom of your, your lid and then what we do we've got the we've got our armor here so you take kind of load your your brush up a little bit you know it's kind of hard to tell how much is in there but and then all you do you go over it. Now, I know this may be a little bit difficult to see on the camera. Plus, this is kind of a, this is probably not the best color. I'm just going to shake a little bit on there. You can shake it on there. You just want to be careful. You want to kind of pepper it over. But you can brush it or you can shake it there. And then I just take my brush here and I go and scrub it in. And scrub it in real good. And what this will do, when you scrub it in, it's actually going to mute down some of the shine of the metallic base color. And it's also, which I know it's probably not easy to see, what it's also going to do is it's going to um it's gonna mask up notice there's a little there we go. It's going to um create like a little dirt layer. Like it's it's going to create uh, an impression of like a dirty layer over the top. I know it's probably not easy to see because these colors are not the greatest, but you can kind of see a little bit right. I'll point to it here. 
right over here you see where there's some kind of like little gray there's like a, a gray sort of there you go right here see all this in through here you kind of see it there's a little bit of it looks kind of like dirt kind of sooty looking and that is carbon that's the carbon um, dusting carbon scoring that you've got going on and that's all it takes is a little bit of artist chalk um, to create that effect once it gets to this stage okay it's ready to be sealed well, that's what I call sealing sealing the paint okay and you'll just take some uh, you want to take some some clear uh, matte finish paint which is we'll, we'll go ahead and do that I'm gonna do that off camera and then I'll bring the piece back and show you um, what it looks like when it's finished alright here's our completed plate um, after we've sprayed on our, our mat, or you can even use a satin uh, finish. And if you look at it here, you can kind of see there's a uh, there's sort of a texture. There's a sort of an effect that gets created by the, the finish when it hits the carbon dust. It causes like, you know, it almost causes it to look like there's these little dirt flecks all over it. Okay? And you can sort of see this in the light. And that's just that's just an effect that that carbon or that uh, that chalk creates, you know, when the uh, when the finish hits it, and when you put it in the light, you can even see it has a grimy, you know, it's got a real dim sort of light reflection there, and you can even see that that rough texture, that um, you know, that impression of a rough, dirty texture that's created by it. So you know, that's just like I said, that's just created from the uh, from the, the chalk dust that we put on earlier, and then putting the matte paint over it. So it really comes out very nice, and it's a very simple technique to use that that really kicks your your armor plate up a notch. So, and that's that's how we we paint with a uh, layered weathering effect and uh, add a carbon dusting.